ఆనందం కొంటాడు coming together is a beginning keeping together is progress working together is success good evening to one and all present here at this auspicious and long awaited august occasion today in the long march of a comrade college the department of microbiology is going to add a milestone through this international conference on biopharmaceuticals a new era in human health hospitality is unarguably one of the defining qualities of a comrade college today as we spe specially celebrate this landmark a heart so inspired with joy thus to welcome them gathering in a meet i like to call dr g arun kumar assistant professor of microbiology to deliver the address am i audible good afternoon everyone it's my pleasure good afternoon everyone it's my pleasure to deliver this welcome address first of all i would like to thank our president sir thiru v elango for motivating us to organize this international webinar on biopharmaceuticals a new era in human health it's my honor to welcome dr d nagarajan sir principal kamraj college for his entire support in organizing this mm -hmm. webinar my profound gratitude mm -hmm. and hearty mm -hmm. welcome mm -hmm. to dr a m tony melvin sir mm -hmm. director kamraj mm -hmm. college mm -hmm. for his constant mm -hmm. encouragement mm -hmm. it's my it's my great pleasure to welcome our resource person dr kumarisan ramanathan sir associate professor of medical biochemistry mckelly university ethiopia for availing his valuable time to share his expertise with us next i would like to welcome dr s abhirami ka Excuse me Arun Kumar sir you have muted yourself please unmute yourself Good afternoon everyone it's my pleasure to deliver the welcome address first of all i would like to thank our president Thiruvi Ilango sir for motivating us to organize this international webinar on pharmaceuticals a new era in human health it's my honor to welcome Dr. D Nagarajan sir principal Kamraj college for his entire support in organizing this webinar my profound gratitude and hearty welcome to Dr. A M Tony Melvin director Kamraj college for his constant encouragement it's my great pleasure to welcome the resource person Dr. Kumarisan Ramanathan sir associate professor of medical biochemistry Mekel University Ethiopia for availing his valuable time to share his expertise with us next i would like to welcome dr s abhirami convener and dr m sangeet the organizing secretary of this webinar for their sincere effort to organize this international webinar my sincere thanks and warm welcome to mr sarvanand sir office superintendent and his technical team kamraj college chudgiri for their technical support my hearty welcome to all the faculties of kamraj college and other college faculties and student participants of kamraj college and other colleges and all other delegates once again i welcome you all for this international webinar thank you thank you sir for your kind words of welcome your words mean a lot to us for they carry a lot of wisdom and vision for our future i now request dr a m tony melvin our director of self supporting courses to give his words of felicitation
your words mean a lot to us for they carry a lot of wisdom and vision for our future i now request dr am to tony melvin our director sorry dr am sangeeta a direct assistant professor of microbiology to give her words of fel felicitation meaning to all this is dr am sangeeta assistant professor department of microbiology kamraj college kudukudi tamil nadu india i am even special to felicitate these moments more than 20 years our microbiology department has been now upgrading as a research center and uh, under our guidance scholars are pursuing phd we have well library facilities and unlimited net access microbiology department on more than 700 for this wonderful achievement we in the to felicitate the honorable our management kamraj kalan our honorable management committee members our honorable dean our honorable principal our honorable director our beloved hod and all faculties now we having honorable chief guest dr d kumarayan ramanathan mehila university ethiopia he is very talented and and knowledgeable person we proud ourselves to get his as a chief guest now we having topic biopharmaceuticals a new era in human health we would like to felicitate our honorable chief guest to select current valuable topic and this is very hardest area to understand to 40 percentage of drug industries are struggling to produce bio drugs this is not a easy job but a valuable one compared to all drugs past 8 months we are step in new pandemic era and we are in need overcome situation now not only overcome but we have to make permanent solution to save our lives thanks to all thank you ma'am if your action inspires others to dream more learn more and become more you are a leader says john quincy adams at this junction i would like to attribute this proverb to a resource person now i like to call mini vashni from second msc microbiology kamraj college to give introduction about a resource person good evening to respect our principals director of self supporting courses my dear staff and participants from various community i am glad to introduce dr kumarayan ramanathan managing director of biomedical tiruchirappalli he is an incredible person with 17 years of experience in research and 12 years of experience in teaching a delightful speaker has five teaching philosophies enthusiasm integration trust empathy and research and have a great fascination with three d status desire determination and dedication recalling his degree life he completed his undergraduate in biochemistry in bharathidasan university and his post graduate in the same field in periyar university salem with first class moving to his career life dr kumarayan started as a biochemist in renal laboratory at tiruchirappalli for 5 years followed by his contribution as lecturer in department of biotechnology mini 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 cake medikya mini good evening to respect our principal director of self supporting courses my dear staff and participants from various community i am glad to introduce dr kumarayan ramanathan managing director of biomedical tiruchirappalli he is an incredible person with 17 years of experience in research and 12 years of experience in teaching a delightful speaker has five teaching philosophies enthusiasm integration trust empathy and research and have a great fascination with three d's that is desire determination and dedication 
Recalling his degree life, he completed, completed his undergraduate in biochemistry in Bharati Rasan University and his postgraduate in the same field in Periyar University, Salem, with first class. Moving to his career life, Dr. Kumarasan started as a biochemist in renal care laboratory at Tiruchirappalli for five years, followed by his contribution as a lecturer in the Department of Biotechnology in Kurunji College of Arts and Science, Tiruchirappalli for one year. Then he continued as an assistant professor in the Department of Biotechnology in Periyar Maniyama Institute of Science and Technology at Tanjavur for six years and associate professor in Department of Medical Biochemistry in Division of Medical Bioscience, School of Medicine, College of Health Science, Meccal University, Ethiopia, and now a managing director in Biomedicine, Sirichrapalli. He is serving as an associate editor in European Journal of Biotechnology and Bioscience and in Biotechnology Review Team. Dr. Kumarasan also serves as an editorial board member in American Journal of Biopharmacology, Biochemistry and Life Science, International Journal of Medical Science Research and Practice, Journal of Medical Science and Clinical Research, Scholar in a Journal of Biotechnology, Journal of Nephrology and Urology Research, Journal of Cardiology and Therapeutics, Journal of Endocrinology and Diabetes Mellitus, and Journal of Nephrology Advances. On the other hand, he is a reviewer in DNA and Cell Biology, Clinical Transplantation, BMC Complementary and Alternative Medicine, International Journal of Nephrology and Renovascular Diseases, Indian Heart Journal, Indian Journal of Biochemistry and Biophysics, International Journal of Pharma and Bioscience, and Journal of Medicine and Medical Sciences. Dr. Kumarasan is a great man in research science with 45 international publications and 6 national publications. He has also presented 19 papers in different conferences and symposiums. He has also participated in three staff development programs and attended 24 workshops and conferences. He has also been invited as a guest lecturer in nearly 16 institutes. He is an eminent person with conversant technical skills such as isolation of RNA or DNA from different tissue sources, cloning and in vitro expression of recombinant proteins, cell-free expression, protein purification, animal tissue culture techniques, clinical biochemistry techniques and clinical trials. He has also done two projects regarding profile of various disease spectrum in hemodialysis patients at Adayar Specialized Comprehensive Hospital, Mechal, Ethiopia, and production of plantibody from angiographic paniculata by using rDNA technology funded by TNSCST Medical Science during 2013 to 2014. Dr. Kumar Aysen was selected as a participant for scientific writing course organized by International Society of Nephrology and Indian Society of Nephrology and honored as the Best Teaching Staff Award under the School of Architecture, Engineering and Technology for the year 2013 to 2014 by Perrier Maniame University, Tanjavur. I think he has an appetite for research and acquiring knowledge because a normal person cannot achieve this much in his lifetime. I really thank my staff for, for providing me such an opportunity to int introduce a master person. Yes, Archie is a really inspiring personality and we are privileged to have you, sir. I would like to hand over the upcoming precious time to a great speaker, Dr. Kumarasan, to share his ideas on biopharmaceuticals. Dr. Kumarisan, sir, you can start, sir. Thank you. Hello? Yes, sir, you, yes, sir, you can start. Yes, sir, the screen okay. is visible, sir. It's visible. PPT is visible. Okay, okay. Um, good evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the management um, principal and head of the Department of Microbiology and uh, Sangeeta man for uh, this wonderful opportunity. Um, uh, today's topic is uh, very, very important. Uh, especially, we are facing a lot of uh, consequences and uh, tragedy 
because of this COVID pandemic, uh, definitely this biopharmaceutical uh, will uh, give you a baseline idea. Uh, maybe probably the participant, uh, I hope they are from a life science field. So they could uh, um, improve or enhance their knowledge towards biopharmaceuticals and they can uh, address the uh, pandemic problem in future. So this, uh, this slide clearly tells us about the, uh, when the biopharmaceutical starts. So up to 1940, we have only pharmaceutical uh, production. After that, the discovery of DNA, then the biopharmaceutical field starts from DNA discovery. So after that, we know the sequence, we know protein, we know uh, RNA, everything come in this field, the biopharma field uh, boom. The first uh, biopharmaceutical product, maybe the recombinant insulin. You just look at this picture, it uh, says the top 10 pharmaceutical company, majority of these pharmaceutical companies, they are producer of lot of biopharmaceutical products like insulin or recombinant uh, erythropoietin or uh, growth factors or um, other uh, even vaccines, everything, even monoclonal antibodies, all those biopharmaceuticals are produced by these 10 pharmaceutical companies. This is a general view, how much time a yeah, drug should come into the market, how much time we have to take to come up with a one drug molecule. You just to look at the picture, it is a general uh, phenomena. Uh, uh, for example, if you want to do some uh, uh, molecule which contains antimicrobial activity or anti-cancer activity, whatever it may be. In our uh, undergraduate or postgraduate level, we are doing some, uh, you can uh, isolate uh, uh, something uh, from uh, plant source and you can uh, put it on the uh, microplate or uh, you, you will see the activity. After that, we will simply leave because our uh, uh, research is over, we will get a degree, then we will uh, wind up our research. But so those kind of researchers, you can say that uh, this plant having this activity, this, uh, that activity, whatever it may be. Then if you take or if you do further research on that, those molecules, then you will uh, screen maybe uh, 10,000 to 1 lakh compounds. Then you will come to the preclinical stage, maybe 500 or 250 or 100 molecules. Then if you provide with, uh, prove with uh, preclinical studies, I mean animal studies, then you have to uh, prove your concept. For example, com compound X having anti-cancer activity. Then you have to prove with animal. So this is called preclinical. This is the story how a drug molecule get approved by FDA. So once free preclinical you completed, then those evidences you have to submit to the FDA or in India we have to submit to DGCI, uh, Drug Control General of India, as IND, Investigational New Drug Application. Then once this uh, you apply then uh, your DGC will allow you to do clinical trials. Now, uh, everybody aware of clinical trials because of this pandemic. So many companies, are, they are saying that the phase one over, phase two over, phase three over, uh, this month end or next month end, they are going to release the vaccine. All these, this process it takes, you see the time frame for uh, up to preclinical, Sir, Ramanagan, sir. Participants, please mute your mic. Ramanagan, sir, your connection is uh, gone. Are you here, sir? Hello. 
Sir, I'm not sure. Hello. Sir, are you there? Sir, I'm not sure. Participants, please uh, wait for a minute. Sir, welcome. Please wait for a minute. Sir, sir, are you there? Hello, sir. Come on, sir. Hello, sir. Ah, sir, you can continue, sir. You can continue, sir. Hello, sir. Sir, unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. No problem, sir. No problem, sir. Please okay, continue. sir. Please continue, sir. Your screen yeah. is visible, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then coming to the next stage, this is an uh, uh, entire story of uh, what I explained uh, previous slide. This NDE is a new um, drug entity. How it developed from lab to market? I already told you it almost take uh, eight to nine years. Uh, full -fledged, fledged research will come up with a single molecule, right? We have to spend crores and crores of money, right? These are the different uh, components of biopharmaceuticals. Look at uh, here: vaccines, growth factors. Um, erythropoietin, interferons, insulin, monoclonal antibodies. Now uh, you could understand what is a biopharmaceutical, how it is uh, so much important for our day-to-day -day activity. Right. Coming to the uh, research, pertaining with the research, the cancer biopharmaceuticals are predominant in the globe. So after that, you look at the, uh, the gap. So cancer and the second one is Sir, you have muted yourself. Please unmute yourself. Sorry. So uh, infectious diseases is the second largest uh, uh, core area. The, we need a bio, lot of biopharmaceuticals. One such example is, now we are uh, facing a consequences with the COVID-19, right? So now we need some vaccine, a good vaccine, which address COVID-19. 
So biopharma major role in infectious diseases. This is a general uh, scenario how uh, a drug molecule can manufacture. Uh, as a life scientist, you know the microbial fermentation and animal tissue culture. So both uh, way you can uh, produce your uh, uh, biopharmaceuticals uh, like insulin or anything. For example, if you make insulin, so I have to take insulin gene. I have to uh, clone with some uh, suitable vector, express with some uh, uh, organism, maybe prokaryotic or eukaryotic, whatever it may be. Then I have to harvest that uh, expressed uh, protein. Then I have to go with uh, purification. Up to expression, it is upstream process. After that, isolate and purify, that is uh, downstream process. So both the process you will get a yeah, purified form of biopharmaceuticals. Again, this is the, again, uh, the picture of uh, how biopharmaceuticals get manufactured through upstream and downstream processes. These are the, some of the examples of uh, your uh, biopharmaceuticals produced from Saccharomyces cerevisiae. You look at uh, insulin and uh, GMCF, granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, which is essential for bone marrow transplantation. And uh, your uh, for vaccine, your anticoagulants, your uh, diabetes ulcers, all those diseases so we need biopharmaceuticals. Still, research are uh, researchers are working towards to identify. Yeah, precise biopharmaceuticals to address these kind of life-threatening diseases. The next part is you look at here, uh, even a transgenic animal, we can uh, make biopharmaceuticals. Biopharmaceuticals is nothing but uh, you know, you know, drug molecules may be uh, produced from living organism or living source, whatever it may be, plant, animal, or microbial source or even marine source, whatever it may You look at here, even uh, the transgenic animals milk, we can express those proteins. These uh, proteins expressed in animal milk. You can take a milk and you can purify the protein or simply you can consume the milk so that uh, the uh, protein which is required by your system will be automatically absorbed by the system. So that is the concept why they express with the transgenic animals. Then even we can express in plants. The advantage of uh, plants is uh, maybe cost is low, the maintenance cost is low. You can uh, uh, harvest a large quantity of your expressed proteins. Uh, similarly, you can uh, uh, look at uh, the uh, uh, the laboratory expenses or other things, what we are doing with animal tissue culture, uh, those expenses are we, we, we need not to spend with the plant tissue culture or plant-based research. Then uh, this is the one uh, typical example, how you develop a bio biopharmaceuticals. For example, you have to decide the target. I mean target means your drug molecule should target either DNA or RNA or protein, whatever it may be. You have to decide the target. Then once you decide the target, then you have to develop antibody against that. This technology is antibody proteomics technology. So you are going to develop antibody against the antigen, means your foreign particle. Then you have an antibody, then you go with drug development. So you have antigen, you put antibody, then uh, uh, your antigen may be, the concentration may be reduced, like your uh, monoclonal antibody production. So biopharmaceutical, uh, uh, little deviation of bio, biological medicine, uh, it is nothing but a molecule which is produced from the living organism for a medical purpose. So these are the core uh, biopharmaceuticals. We have a six, seven classification. 
Uh, one is uh, hemopoietic uh, growth factors, monoclonal antibodies, vaccine, thrombolytic agents, interferons, hormones, and blood factors. These seven, seven classifications are biopharmaceutical. So any biopharmaceuticals should come in under any one of these seven classifications. So hematopoietic growth factor uh, may be it involved in hematopoiesis. I mean, uh, the cell proliferation, differentiation, maturation, these function facilitated by hematopoietic uh, growth factors. For example, uh, for blood cell uh, uh, synthesis, so hematopoietic stem cell to uh, RBC or WBC or platelet, for that, you need hematopoietic growth factors. Four majorly, uh, what we concentrate, uh, four uh, important uh, growth factors. One is uh, anthropoietin, and second one is uh, GCF, I mean uh, GCSF or GMCSF, then interleukin 11. These four are uh, main gro uh, growth factors. Then the same thing you can uh, do with uh, recombinant DNA technology. For example, uh, wh what are the uh, re recombinant uh, uh, hemato, I mean, uh, erythropoietin available in the market? Those are from recombinant, uh, using recombinant DNA technology. So recombinant uh, uh, human erythropoietin. So that may be produced based on this technology. These are the, some of the example of women, uh, I mean, uh, hematopoietic growth factors, which is uh, commercially available in the market. The monoclonal antibody, everybody knows the fundamental of monoclonal antibody, how monoclonal antibody get produced uh, in the laboratory. Uh, but uh, the picture uh, clearly says how this monoclonal antibody gets synthesized. The problem is it is not so easy to synthesize monoclonal antibody as the picture uh, uh, illustrated as. Uh, we have a lot of uh, consequences to produce uh, monoclonal antibody um, because a lot of uh, influencing factors will um, destroy your monoclonal antibody production. Right. So we have a different kinds of uh, antibody uh, before that, uh, in the commercially uh, market, in the market uh, commercially, so many monoclonal antibodies are available. Uh, you can uh, identify where what is the source of this monoclonal antibody, whether uh, human source or uh, other source. I mean, non-human source are mixed together. Yes, you can uh, identify based on the name given in the molecule. Maybe, for example, this uh, panitum means MAB, it is common to any monoclonal antibody products. Then U means that it is synthesized from human. Then uh, ZU means humanized, means non-human sources you can synthesize. So the genetically, uh, the gene sequence and protein sequence more or less similar. So, so that we call as humanized. Then chimeric, maybe from uh, human and humanized. Mixed together, we make chimeric uh, monoclonal antibodies. So the name itself, you can identify whether this monoclonal antibody from uh, human source or non-human source are mixed together. So we have uh, different kinds of monoclonal antibodies. One is uh, naked monoclonal antibody, means uh, we need not to attach anything with monoclonal antibody. The monoclonal antibody itself play a major role in our system. I mean, it uh, act against cancer or infection, anything. Then second one is the conjugated monoclonal antibody. This monoclonal antibodies may be attached with some chemotherapy drug or uh, some uh, radio materials so that it uh, enters to the body and it delivers your chemotherapy drug or your radiotherapy drug, whatever it may be, it act. So it, it uh, act as a, a, a drug carrier and it exactly deliver the site where we want to act this drug. 
then uh, radio labeled specifically we can label some monoclonal antibody uh, this is one example uh, i already given so you can uh, monitor whether uh, this antibody uh, like your elisa test if uh, you have a radio labeled uh, um, antigen or antibody then uh, the antigen antibody reaction takes place it emits some uh, radiation you can uh, identify through some uh, cameras like uh, gamma camera or other cameras then chemo labeled again the like uh, radio labeled you can label with uh, chemotherapeutic drugs with monoclonal antibody then it uh, delivers your uh, chemotherapeutic drug in the specific i mean the target cancer cell to kill the cancer cell then these are the some of the available uh, monoclonal antibodies the next classification uh, vaccine you know very well uh, we have uh, different kinds of vaccine uh, attenuated vaccine uh, inactivated vaccines some uh, toxicides so different kinds of vaccine today um, even uh, this uh, covid 19 vaccine we have different kinds of vaccine they are working one among the vaccine uh, is uh, based on the micro rna um, and you know these are the some of the example of uh, different kinds of vaccine uh, which is available and its uh, disadvantages what are the disadvantages when you use attenuated vaccine or inactivated or killed vaccine this is an example of a dengue viral vaccine which is produced by sanofi it is the third largest biopharmaceutical company third or fourth pharmaceutical company in the world then this is a very important area thrombolytic agent because uh, uh, other diseases um, we have a little time but uh, if you have a heart attack we have to treat them immediately so thrombolytic agents play a major role to save the myocardial infarction patients so thrombosis is nothing but a formation of clot thrombus in the uh, blood circulation it blocks your blood supply so that if there is no blood supply obviously you will get very minimum quantity of oxygen even sometime if complete block you won't get oxygen then we have to clear that clot for that we need thrombolytic we have to lyse the clot for that we have a lot of uh, biopharmaceuticals some molecules see we have a uh, three generation one of first generation streptokinase and urokinase these uh, enzymes obviously streptokinase from microbial source um, so it uh, clear your blood clots then a third and uh, up to third generation we have a uh, Uh, this uh, thrombolytic agents however uh, majority of the participant you might have uh, come across um, this uh, generally what we are uh, doing when you have a heart attack they are putting heparin generally we know heparin these are the other thrombolytic agents which save the patients even still uh, they are practicing this uh, thrombolytic agents for myocardial infarction patients yeah this is the how you produce uh, the biopharmaceutical from streptococci this is urokinase uh, from uh, produced in kidney because that's why it is produced because it is a enzyme naturally it is produced in our system then tissue plasminogen activators even uh, this uh, category of uh, drug molecules uh, even currently they are using for mi patients these are the commercially available uh, biopharmaceuticals for i mean uh, thrombolytic agents 
for treating MI patients especially. Then another classification uh, is uh, interferons. Uh, I hope everybody would have uh, come across uh, interferons. Uh, we have uh, three important types, type 1 and type 2, type 3. Uh, generally, um, interferons are produced when we have any infection by virus or any other cause. So interferon molecules will produce and it is released. It uh, just to move to the neighboring cell. It binds to the specific receptor. It enters to the uh, neighboring cell and it blocks the production of viral proteins. So that virus unable to multiply. That is the basic concept of interferons. So we have uh, different kinds of interferon, interferon alpha, interferon uh, uh, alpha 2A, alpha 2B, uh, so many interferons we have. We are commercially use these interferons for many clinical conditions. Then uh, another classification, hormones. Um, you know, see, look at this picture. All these uh, biological organs, definitely they need hormones to function properly. For example, uh, if you take uh, ovaries or uterus, you need uh, gonadotrophins. Uh, uh, liver, obviously we need uh, hormones to maintain the cholesterol level and its uh, function, I mean, uh, production of latafin and uh, maintaining the normal metabolism, metabolic activity, the, because the liver is the major organ, almost 99% of the metabolic process takes place in the liver. So uh, hormonal regulation is mandatory to regulate your day-to-day -day activity. Similarly, every organ, we need hormones to maintain. I mean, maintain uh, the normal activity in a uh, homeostasis manner. One such example uh, is a hormone replacement therapy, especially for uh, postmenopausal women. This is what I'm, I'm telling you the one example. Uh, the women, those who are under postmenopausal period, obviously they are, um, we are, I mean, uh, calcium regulating hormones like parathyroid hormone or other hormones which deals with calcium and phosphorus, those hormones are altered. That's why their calcium level is going down. So we have to give them either this side of hormonal replacement therapy or directly we are prescribed them calcium. So how this hormone therapy helpful for the postmenopausal woman? See the left side picture, it shows a healthy bone cell. The second picture is due to hormonal imbalance, the minerals which is stored in your bone like calcium, phosphorus, everything will be deteriorated. So when you replace with the hormone, then obviously this function will be normal. So your mineral will be deposited on the bone. So your mineral, uh, your bone strength will be increased. So you will be normal. So these are the, some of the commercially available uh, hormones. Not only uh, calcium-based hormone, any hormones. This is a blood clotting factor. So, you know, we have a pathway, blood clotting pathway. In the pathway, you could uh, come across, uh, we have uh, 13 factors which involved in blood clotting process. So nowadays, uh, if you have uh, any problem with these factors, almost, I'm not saying all the factors, almost majority of factors, maybe if it is a protein origin, uh, due to some mutation, the, some factor may not be produced. So those situations, we need these biopharmaceuticals. At the time, this factor uh, we can produce and we can give them as a medicine, either injection form or uh, IV form, whatever it may be. See, this is an example for uh, coagulation factor 9. If a patient lack with factor 9 due to mutation or due to any other reason, 
they their uh, their body unable to produce this factor 9 obviously we will give them like insulin so what are the advantage over biopharmaceutical than uh, uh, synthetic pharmaceutical so biopharmaceutical it is a cost uh, highly effective because uh, uh, the side effect is very very minimal and it is uh, produced from uh, some biological sources then it is highly specific and the side effect i already mentioned the side effects are very very minimal and they are not carcinogenic they never uh, cause any cancer if we go with synthetic uh, obviously some of the drug molecule may cause cancer i am not saying that every uh, pharmaceutical products cause cancer some of them may cause cancer and it is uh, quite safe than uh, synthetic uh, molecules and uh, you can produce easily with uh, commercial production mm, because if you go with uh, plant source you will produce lot of things you need not to spend lot of money for production compared with uh, pharma i'm not saying that uh, you can easily produce every biopharmaceutical not like that you have to spend lot of money compared with uh, pharmaceutical industry you can spend uh, um a little bit of uh, lesser uh, money so uh, i conclude uh, my talk with biopharmaceutical drugs account for 8% of total pharmaceutical market sales market sales so almost 8% now in future it may be increased so you look at uh, second line second point biopharma experts account for over 74% of the overall export from india in the health industry so this is very very important so we have a lot of scope when you work with biopharmaceutical products uh, i mentioned the seven category any one of the category if you working with uh, those category definitely you have a lot of scope in future thus they may turn out to have the most profound influence on the future practice of molecular medicine because now people are working with uh, personalized medicine so drug molecule x may not suitable for uh, patient 1 drug molecule y may not uh, suitable for patient uh, x so patient x need their own i mean personalized medicine so we need uh, Uh, personalized medicine that is the future so how we develop personalized medicine based on their genome setup so that is molecular medicine so uh, for example if you take uh, avil so somebody avil may be uh, tolerable somebody may not be so for them uh, we go with uh, cetacean so like that individual genetic setup play a major role in personalized medicine that is the future so biopharmaceuticals is the um, Uh, one of the best area in future for new development i mean in the healthcare industry that is the uh, take home message for all the participant so i am i, I want to uh, clearly uh, tell you i didn't take any in depth of biopharmaceutical i just uh, give you an overview of biopharmaceuticals and definitely i hope uh, some of you get impressed with this field and uh, uh, working uh, some novel molecule in future thank you very much for your patient caring if any queries please thank you sir the lecture was so informative and useful we have also acquired much knowledge through your presentation we can see your devotion and dedication for the promotion of scientific temper in the society we are really blessed to listen to this speech sir thank you audience you can post your questions in the chat box sir yeah there's a question from a student shall we come at are there any side effects of such hormone therapies so obviously if it is a biopharmaceutical you may not uh, expect so much of side effects maybe sometime the uh, i mean uh, if you take some new things to the system system should get adapt for that for that it take quite uh, some patient may adapt immediately some patient may take some time but uh, i don't think that uh, much side effect on that uh, biopharmaceuticals 
Am I clear? Thank you, sir, for your clarification. Any other questions? Participants, you can ask your questions. If you are having any queries, you can ask sir. So he will be uh, here to uh, clarify that. So another question is there. Please, yeah. te please tell about interferon anti-reaction in body. Interferon, interferon sir? Interferon anti-reaction. I mean, on the other words, uh, side effect. I like that only one person asked please tell about interferon anti reaction in body i don't uh, know about anti reaction of uh, interferon yeah. uh, i mean uh, uh, actually uh, for side effect only he is uh, he posted like that i think so oh, okay. is there any side effect for uh, interferon in other words we can uh, put it as no interferon I, uh, definitely it won't give you uh, much side effect i already told you the adaptation may take some time maybe some uh, inconvenience while taking starting the dose maybe some inconvenience uh, patient may feel uh, apart from that i don't think that uh, a severe life threatening uh, consequences because of interference yes sir i just like to add some more point to sir's view see yeah. interferon is just a protein okay yeah. so protein is uh, not going to affect us anyway anyhow after a limited period of time it is going to be uh, uh, to be uh, destroyed in the body doing the yes. protein turnover so definitely there won't be side effect but if we take in a proper amount i think yeah. so is it sir correct sir thank you yeah proper amount so even if you take another uh, beyond your limit uh, body won't accept obviously it may be yeah. Yeah. eliminated out yeah eliminated yes sir. thank you sir the other question is also here sir um uh, person name sushitra tapa she posted like um uh, what are the current challenges in the application of molecular medicine what are the current challenges in the application of molecular medicine yeah current challenge is uh, personalized medicine so we have to sequence each and every individual genome that is the major challenging area if you uh, maybe uh, currently i hope uh, 60000 rupees for uh, complete genome sequence for individual so it is not affordable for every indian so maybe uh, in future it may be drastically come down if uh, tech technology advancement due to technology advancement see uh, um, when uh, complete genome project uh, was completed at the time uh, there is no next generation sequencing now we have ngs maybe in future some other technology will uh, drastically reduce the cost of uh, complete genome sequence if it is come uh, maybe at least 500 or 1000 everybody having their own sequence in hand based on the sequence i can say yes this drug is suitable for me this drug is not suitable for me that is the big challenge in the molecular medicine i hope so yes sir. i hope uh, suhidra tapa a uh, doubt has been clarified so another one question is that uh, from preeti sir yeah uh, is there is there any biopharmaceutical uh, found out for covid 19 so far uh, are they just dealing with antibacterials or synthetic drugs like that she posted is there any biopharmaceutical found out for covid 19 so far are they just yeah. dealing with antibacterial or synthetic drugs um so because uh, none of the vaccine came out successfully every vaccine are under trial so out of those trial some of the uh, vaccines are uh, from bio source only uh, one such example is uh, microrna based because um, the information they they did not revealed completely they simply put uh, this based uh, maybe microrna based or other based so i couldn't find out uh, the complete information on these uh, uh, vaccines i mean covid 19 vaccine so uh, definitely there is a lot of biopharmaceutical uh, process behind the covid vaccine once it get uh, succeed and it come out the market then definitely you should understand how the biopharmaceutical industry is uh, important okay sir thank you sir the other person uh, another one question is also there from dr dushyant sharma okay. uh, is the pathway of action of drugs isolated from 
natural resources is same as for synthetic drug like that he posted the pathway of action of drugs isolated from natural resources is same as for synthetic drug no uh, uh, maybe uh, my understanding may be wrong if uh, it is correct so he is asking uh, the synthetic pathway and uh, natural pathway both are same the pro problem is they we are produced from uh, bio sources they are uh, synthetically produced but the mechanism action, action is the uh, same that is his question i think am i right yes sir yes sir so the but problem that... is even though mechanism of action is same the production is uh, different see the bio source for example if i go with the insulin uh, i mean uh, recombinant uh, insulin it is well tolerated even though you go with the commercial i mean uh, synthetic side synthesis side it, it is not uh, well tolerated compared with the bio pharmaceutical that is the one major disadvantage advantage with uh, bio pharmaceutical and uh, synthetic even though you see uh, the pathway is same definitely if you take any uh, synthetic molecule they will give clearly mechanism of action how this drug will enter your uh, um, i mean uh, system and how it will uh, uh, reabsorb and uh, it uh, reach the target site see the the i mean the bioavailability and the, what we can say that uh, the solubility that is that makes a difference with uh, biopharmaceutical and pharmaceutical how much it soluble that is important for biopharmaceutical okay, we are so, taking from bio source the next question is uh, yeah. from pooja dangi pooja pooja dangi so uh, sir how hmm. does biopharmaceutical differs from pharmaceutical how does biopharmaceutical differs from uh, the convenient ordinary pharmaceutical or chemical pharmaceutical yeah, yeah i already told you uh, biopharmaceutical the source is uh, from uh, i mean uh, bio source in uh, pharmaceutical you you are going going with uh, synthesize something chemically for example if we uh, take uh, any bio pharmaceutical i go with either microorganism or uh, other things but if you go with uh, chemistry you take uh, chemicals and uh, you are synthesize chemicals you have a formulation you take uh, some uh, sodium some uh, chlorine something something and you mix it together make a formulation but here biopharmaceutical you are uh, produced with you are uh, i mean uh, uh, extracted from bio sources based uh, to best of my knowledge that that could be the answer apart from that uh, i may not uh, aware yes sir uh, thank you very much sir for your uh, for your uh, neat and clean explanation uh, so uh, uh, any other participant if you want to ask any other questions related to biopharmaceuticals or general research you can ask sir you can post your questions in the chat box any any other questions thank you sir we are now at the end of this function thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude gratitude is the completion of thankfulness thankfulness may consist merely of words gratitude is shown in acts i now request ms b clara priti to deliver the words of gratitude good evening everyone hi team it's a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion let me first of all start by giving glory to almighty god for making today's occasion a resounding success on behalf of our microbiology department first and foremost i thank our president mr v elangovan for his motivational support to organizing this webinar i also express my heartfelt thanks to our principal dr nagarajan and all our managing managing committee for their unstinting support we are very grateful to our director dr am tony melvin for his valuable contribution and encouragement in all our efforts i extend my very heartfelt gratitude to our chief guest dr kumarishan ramanathan 
Associate Professor Mikhail University, Ethiopia, for his presence, inspiring, and talk about new era of biopharmaceutical in human health. I owe a special gratitude to our head of the department, Dr. S. Abirami, and our organizing secretary, Dr. K. Sangina, for making this webinar a resounding success. My special gratitude to Mr. Saravanan, Upper Supanand, Kamaraj College, for his technical support. And too, I thank all HODs, all our faculties, and in and out, and various invitees present here. Last but not least, I thank all participants present here, accepting our invitation and making this day great. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, Preeti, ma'am. So, uh, feedback link is posted in the chat box. So, uh, participants, please uh, fill up the feedback form. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, thank you very much for uh, availing your precious time amidst the busy schedule, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> 